okay so the minister for immigration canada has confirmed that by the end of this spring the draws for federal skilled worker classes are going to resume of course he hasn't given a specific date but i can tell you before the end of spring means before the start of summer so that is before june 21 so between now we are we are almost at the end of march so we have about two months maybe three months tops and guys what are you doing to get back or to be drawn do you still have that drive do you still have that dream of coming to canada then you need to do the fall hi guys how are you this is lois welcome back to my channel i hope you're well and safe wherever you are i come bearing good news today i'm your santa <laughs> guys 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 where are you come on in come on in come on in good news good news good news um today I just want to let you know that the express entry draws for skilled workers are resuming yes they are coming back so I want to just give you a brief uh, you know notification here we shouldn't be long but I want to tell you what you should be doing and uh, how you should be getting ready guys okay I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant and I'm based in Calgary, Alberta. Have you subscribed? If you have, thank you, thank you, thank you. If you haven't, please do subscribe, like, and share this video. Okay, guys? All right. So, we all know that we've been waiting with bated breath. There's been a lot of frustration. Oh, my God. I know so many people have almost given up because uh, these guys kind of, and when I say these guys, I mean RCC, they stopped doing uh, draws for the federal skilled worker classes in December 2020. Of course, the pandemic came. It came with its own complications. And then after that, we had a lot of misfortunes around the world, calamities, humanitarian issues, you know, um, and they were kind of prioritizing everybody else except skilled workers and there was frustration the only skilled workers who continued to be drawn were those ones uh, who belonged under the canadian experience class or the provincial nomination programs because various provinces still went ahead to do their own nominations because they had labor shortages to fill okay so the minister for immigration canada has confirmed that by the end of this spring, the draws for federal skilled worker classes are going to resume. Of course, he hasn't given a specific date, but I can tell you before the end of spring means before the start of summer. So that is before June 21. So between now, we are, we are almost at the end of March. So we have about two months, maybe three months tops. And guys, what are you doing? to get back or to be drawn do you still have that drive do you still have that dream of coming to canada then you need to do the following okay number one you need now to go over your profile and make sure that you still qualify if you had done some eligibility assessment make sure you still qualify if you don't know whether you qualify please my friend okay please get your eligibility checked and not just checked you know uh generically because i see a lot of generic che checks whereby someone tells me yes it said i qualify but then when i apply they said i don't qualify make sure you understand immigration make sure how you actually fit in immigration canada before you spend money seek professional advice guys I mean it. Seek ad uh, advice. I see people, they're spending money, thousands of dollars, without fully understanding express entry or your, your qualifications, your eligibility, your admissibility. Please make sure you understand all those before you start spending money. And before you also start paying for, I don't know, IELTS, for education credential assessments, please make sure that you actually fit in the criteria. Okay, guys? All right. <laughs> so that is number one. Number two, yeah? You know? check your eligibility number three if you, you okay you all know that a, a profile lasts for a year okay and then it expires please guys make sure if your profile is expiring soon like in the next one or two months i would actually recommend that you withdraw your profile and apply immediately again and now you'll have a new profile okay and what do i mean I mean that you can actually go into your express entry profile and could be it says it expires in uh, April 17 or April 20. 
you can actually just go there and click withdraw profile make sure you take a screenshot of everything so that you recreate that profile and now you'll have a fresh uh, profile why do i insist on you having a fresh profile okay the reason being uh you know uh of course you're gonna have a whole year with, oh, that, that you don't have to worry about the, you know, the validity of that profile. And secondly, a lot of provinces actually do go into the express entry and draw people there and they send them notifications of interest. So you could be nominated by a province. Provinces don't want profiles which are expiring soon. For example, Alberta has this policy that says they cannot give you a nomination if your profile is expiring in the next three months. Okay, guys. Yes. So just make sure that you are there and you're fresh. Okay. It's time to re to hit that start uh, button. So we are restarting everything, guys. Okay. Make sure you're ready. Now, uh, the other thing, understand who can go through the express entry. Yes, I said that. Understand who can go through and whether you can go through the express entry. And also understand that express entry actually is not even an immigration program. No, there's that misconception uh, that express entry is an immigration program. It's not. It's a platform that processes three immigration programs, namely the Federal Skilled Worker class, the Federal Skilled Trades class, and the Canadian Experience class. The, and I'm going to give you a brief overview about those programs, but I also just want to let you know that the last draws for the Federal Skilled Worker class and the Federal Skilled Trades class was done in December 2020. Okay, so they haven't done any other draw since that time. Uh, during that time, now during the pandemic, we saw a lot of miracles, especially for the Canadian Experience class, where they continue to draw people with up to as low as 71 points. People with 71 points were drawn uh, under the Canadian Experience class. They also stopped that uh, the draws for that class in uh, fall last year. So we haven't had any draws this year for the Canadian Experience class. Uh, what has been happening is that they've been drawing for the provincial nomination. So provinces have been issuing nominations and then you would bring it back to the express entry or maybe just apply directly to the province. So they've been doing draws for provincial nominations. So now we are about to get back full swing provincial nominations, Canadian experience class, Canadian fair, uh, the federal skilled classes and the federal skilled trades. Okay, guys. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Okay, guys. Yes. And I know you were like, who said that? So, Lois, where did you get that information? Uh, the minister, the Canadian minister for immigration actually said that himself. So it's coming back for sure. I know it's been a long time coming. It's long overdue, guys. So what are the requirements? I want you, in case you don't know the requirements of express entry, I'm just going to go over quickly for you. Okay. So that you know what you need to get doing. Um, for you to get into the express entry, I tell people, always make sure you understand that you need to get 67 points out of 100 out of the eligibility criteria for the following three programs, okay? The Federal Skilled Worker class, and what are the factors that these guys actually consider? They're going to be considering your age, education, work experience, languages, and adaptability, guys, okay? So, for the Federal Skilled Worker class, this class is usually for younger skilled professionals with a minimum of at least one year paid work experience, which is relevant to your area of training. Okay, understand that. And the occupations that are considered, uh, it's any occupation in NOC, OA or B, that is per Canadian classification. Okay. And then, of course, there's the language uh, ability that you must meet and the minimum there is a CLB7. Okay, guys, minimum. I said minimum doesn't mean that that's what you should get. You should be getting over the minimum CLB7. And then, of course, you have to show that you have some post-secondary education, uh, usually a degree, a master's, or even a, a diploma, like a three-year diploma. Uh, please ensure if that education wasn't done in Canada, you are going to need an education credential assessment. Okay. Of course, you have to meet the admissibility part, of course, for this program. So you have to show that you have proof of finances uh, that can fit your family to settle down in Canada. And not just that, you also have to pass medicals 
and uh, pass the criminal text, guys. Okay, that is this eligibility and admissibility. So that is enough of the federal skilled worker class. If you're interested in knowing whether you fit in that class, please book a consultation with me on my website www.mileleimmigrationservices.ca. For the federal skilled trades, again, uh, the requirements are almost similar to those of the federal skilled worker class, except that this class is for people who are skilled, who have skilled trades, okay? They have skilled trades. The requirement here is that you need to either have a job offer in Canada or get a certificate of qualification from the provincial body that governs your particular trade okay you also need to meet some language eligibility there so the minimum is usually a clb5 and then you need to show that you've had at least two years of work experience in your trade in the last five years and uh, of course you need to fit in the relevant nocs that participate in this class and that is major groups are 72 73 82 and 92 minor groups are 632 and uh, 633 okay guys all right so that is the federal skilled trades class in a nutshell guys okay the last one that participates in the express entry is the canadian experience class and that means just as per the name it means that you need at least one year skilled work experience here in Canada. So most likely you'll have come here as a, a foreign temporary worker or a spouse of an international student or you'll be an international student here who has a postgraduate work permit and you've worked in Canada for at least a year. Okay, so those are the people who can apply under the Canadian experience class and of course you need to meet the language abilities of a minimum CLB7 in NOC A or B. Those are the NOCs that actually participate here. Okay, so guys, the job is yours, you know, in Kenya, in Swahili we say kazi kwako, you know, kazi kwako. So now it's up to you. Uh, to do the relevant or to do the necessary things. So don't wait, don't wait. If you really are interested, if you still have that dream, if you haven't killed your dream, because I know COVID killed a lot of dreams. Guys, if you haven't killed your dreams, uh, it's the time now to get ready, uh, get working, get uh, preparing, make sure that you have everything that you need so that by the time when they open up, you are among the first people to apply. One thing I will say, at this point and i know i repeat this all the time i like repetition because people are some of us i'm human we only understand by repetition guys it's not just about getting into the express entry it's a, it's understanding what next if i get into the express entry will i succeed through that direct draw it's understanding the points in the express entry that will be drawn so if you have four hundred and they'll be drawing for the best for 73 so you need to know whether you actually stand chances of being drawn uh, in that in, in that scenario or understanding the kind of provincial nominations that you need to start looking at that apply to your occupation guys okay don't get into the express entry to die i tell people that all the time don't go to express entry to die OK, don't just get in there and sit and wait for, you know, to be to, to be invited while you stand zero chances. Get there and get working on your provincial nominations uh, or, or ensuring that if you if you don't have provincial nomination, then ensure that you raise your scores so high such that you stand that uh, invitation. OK. So how do you raise your points to make sure that at least you meet? Because I'm very sure that most likely these guys are still going to resume invitations with um, the 470s. That's, that's my guess. Okay, again, it's my guess. But uh, based on the competition that we have right now in Canada, a lot of people want to come to Canada. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, maybe it's because we've been doing a lot of sensitization and now Canada is in the limelight. Uh, but guys, uh, competition is going to be tough. So toughen up. Toughen up. Make sure that you can achieve a, a high score if you really need to know how you can achieve a better score uh, in your express entry. Again, talk to me. Book a consultation with me. I'll sit with you for one hour. We go over everything for you and your spouse and see who's the best applicant, uh, your chances of success and what else you should be doing. And maybe 
do you even need to be in the express entry or you should be pursuing something different okay guys so thank you so much again for watching i'll see you in my next video and guys guys i joined tiktok oh my god i don't know why but someone <laughs> made me join tiktok so i'll be sharing a few tiktok videos okay guys see you